Welcome to Experts Exchange. My name is Joe Kelly. Today I'm going to walk you through the process of creating an endpoint within VMware vCloud Automation Center 6. So here we have the default login page for the engineering tenant that we created in previous videos. We're going to log in with some pre-populated creds we have there. And then once we get into the interface itself, we're going to go and what we're most uh, what we're most focused on right now is the infrastructure tab. Now this is the portion of, you may remember in the install, that you had a, a, essentially an, an identity appliance install, uh, which was a virtual appliance. You had a, uh, a VCAC appliance, which was, which was a virtual appliance. And then you had the, the whole Windows side, which was the IaaS portion, uh, it's simply because it was all based on .NET, so it needed to be installed on Windows. That piece, that IaaS piece, is responsible for VM deployment. And those VM deployments take place to what's called endpoints. And endpoints are a collection of resources managed by usually some virtualization platform. So it could be, you know, it could be vCenter, it could be vCD, uh, vCloud Director, it could be vCHS, which is vCloud Hybrid Services, it could be vCO. Oh, that's that's less. vCO is less concerned with the actual deployment of VMs. Uh, you could always also use that as a, an endpoint as well for more upper tier. Uh, application type uh, deployments as well. Uh, within this right here, within the endpoints uh, section of VCAC, I've got four endpoints to find. I've got one for a uh, visa local VCD cell that I have in my lab. I've got one for vCenter. I've got one for VCHS, and I've got one for VCO. These first three are really about VM deployment. So I have the ability with any of these endpoints to deploy to a VCD cell or a vCenter instance or a VCHS instance. This last one, like I said, for VCO is really about taking workflows that are common within VCO and presenting them up to VCAC for, uh, for catalog, uh, catalog entries and uh, request your information. So if you wanted a workflow, for instance, that, that's native within VCO and you wanted that presented up into a catalog, you could do that by making your VCO instance an endpoint. We won't create new endpoints here, but I'll show you kind of what I did to create these. Uh, for each of these, if you click on new endpoint, you have VAP, vCloud Director, you have orchestration, for, and that encompasses vCenter Orchestrator, and then you have virtual, which incorporates vSphere, uh, vSphere vCenter. This is the one that we're going to take, uh, take a look at because it's really the most common endpoint in most of our customers' environments, and that is vCenter itself. Most customers are running vCD internally. Uh, most customers are running vCO because it is installed as part of vCenter, uh, but normally when you're deploying VMs, that's taking place to a vCenter instance. We're all doing that today. Most of our customers are doing that today with templates. This gives you more of an, an upper tier type deployment model uh, that you're able to do with vCAC. In this case, we want to make sure that the name of the endpoint, if we have vCenter running in, in, the, in our environment, we want to make sure the name of the endpoint is the same as the endpoint that we define in the installation of, of IaaS on that Windows server. So I call mine vCenter, and then the address would be the SDK address of that vCenter instance. In this case, mine's going to be vCenter-APL corp .ratform com and then slash SDK. And then the credentials is where you would establish uh, what VCAC what VCAC would use to authenticate to uh, to your endpoint. In this case, for vCenter, I have one established already called vCenter. If I go and edit that, I can see that I called that cred vCenter. I gave it a description. The actual username is not vCenter; it's administrator. And then I typed in the password. Now, once I establish that in this credentials portion of VCAC, I can go in and I can select it as when I'm creating my new import. So I can go here again, click on vCenter, hit OK, and then it's going to add it as that credential that, that uh, VCAC will use to create this endpoint. One other thing to note on this page quickly is the specified manager for network and security platform. That piece is integration for this particular endpoint with VCNS, which is vCloud network and security, and also NSX, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to hit cancel there. I already have that vCenter endpoint created. There's no need to create it again. Uh, if I go to edit, you can see the information that I've already established in there. Just like I said, the SDK address, vCenter creds. I've all been established within this endpoint itself. That's it with endpoint creation within VCAC 6. 
look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial. Thank you.